All right. Welcome, everybody, to episode nine. Uh, it's been a couple of days since I've touched this project, so um, a little quick, quick recap and then get into it. Um, recap. Honestly, don't even know where we left off. I was probably doing that visual exploration. Might as well launch that so we can see where that was. Um, I think the only thing I did offline with the code was I just changed the percent or views to percents because that was for some reason we hadn't done that yet. Um, but everything else is exactly the same. Um, so you'll see we got the charts here. Uh, and pretty much all we can see is the spike. Um, and yeah, that's where we left off. Um, let's see, yesterday uh, we did a kind of uh, a feedback session with, with the team. Uh, I just shared a couple of the folks what we've been doing so far and where we're at and just gauging some reactions. Um, so let's see, I kind of updated these notes here um, in terms of the directions and some based on what people said and some thoughts. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of run through these to familiarize myself and everyone else. Um, uh, this one's not new, talking about using a log scale. Um, starting all charts at zero, uh, meaning normalizing them by uh, the day of their death and looking at that point onward. Um, definitely something I want to do still. Um, basically breaking the charts down into before and after the death to kind of maybe eliminate that spike to see what kind of change happens using the death as an inflection point. Um, that's kind of the same thing before versus after. Oh yeah, so again, um, comparing before and after, maybe it's just looking at one week or one month before and after. Um, applying regressions to maybe quantify the actual drop off. Um, found this little JS regression library um, that basically will just kind of, hopefully be, we can do a, a curve fit um, to kind of figure out if there's any sort of uh, magic number that appears or difference between a few people. I don't know. It could be fun to play around with. Um, what else we talk about? Um, oh, just kind of also looking at, and I have this in the data, um, the, the biggest change, so percent change from their average to the spike to see, you know, who was... I guess most abnormally popular in a sense. Um, this, uh, something Ilya mentioned was um, a way to introduce, I guess the story and the concept is to kind of slowly go through a bunch of different people uh, and like just build, cause like you see, um, what's his name? Stephen Hawking would, had like the highest at like seven something million views, which is like two point something percent of all, all Wikipedia views. Um, so it could be interesting to start with the smaller ones because even the smaller ones, they were still at like a quarter million uh, views. So it could be interesting to kind of slowly introduce people that way to really put the uh, spikes in perspective. I guess that's really what this is about, putting spikes in perspective. Um, categorizing different people. So some of the feedback was like, oh, I wonder if there's, you know, if musicians see more of a uh, post-death kind of bump in general traffic because now like they maybe are more searched because their music is out there. Um, so categorizing into people. Um, seeing if there's any difference in age. So like basically natural death when you're older versus um, a premature death when you're younger. If maybe there's more of um, a sustained impact, maybe there's some age factor there. Um, and a big one for me was maybe binning by week rather than day because we have over a thousand data points for most of these people, which is a lot to digest. And it just also adds a lot of noise. Um, and I was thinking that actually looking at the week data might smooth things out a little bit to, to pick up on some more uh, temporal trends. And also, um, there's a slight, I mean, this is not a horrible problem, but um, 
just after the death, like all, all we're doing right now is looking at this, the day of death spikes. And if that news broke at like 10 PM, then the next day is also going to see a huge spike. So maybe um, kind of lumping together a couple of also just be another way to, to look at it or even just like, you know, three days or something, but I'll start with a week because that's uh, not an arbitrary number. So yeah, that's, you're pretty much caught up now. Um, let's see. This is the same thing. I just added a couple more notes to myself. Um, and then, oh, I tried to like think about everything. So I guess at this point, let me, let me try to externalize. At this point in a project, I always feel like super overwhelmed because there's like a thousand directions to, get, to go in. Um, especially when I wasn't starting specifically with a very discrete question I was trying to answer. Um, so I'm always overwhelmed and not sure what to do at this point. And I want to, and I started having like a thousand different ideas in my head. Um, so I tried to consolidate them into more, a uh, couple of themes that I've been noticing. So these are the three things I kind of was able to pinpoint. So using death as an inflection point, um, I had a bunch of stuff talking about the before and after effect. So that's one kind of theme I've noticed. A second is uh, putting that huge spike, which is clearly something that, I mean, I was anticipating, but not to this like magnitude. Um, so maybe trying to contextualize that um, is a whole other narrative. And then um, the original one, I think, is pretty much kind of where I was going with it is the the decay or the, the decline in and interest in page views um, and what that looks like and what that means. And those are, I think, the three the three general themes I've come up with. Um, Caitlin, do you think there's anything I'm totally missing here? Or does that sound about right to you? I think that sounds about right. Um, I like the idea of clumping them into themes because I think, like you said, this is a symptom of why we're always like start with a question rather than going into the data. Mm -hmm. um, because if you don't have a direction, you, I think, sit on the edge of like a rabbit hole. But sometimes uh -huh. you take the risk with good data like this. But to answer your question, yes, I agree. <laughs> that them well. Awesome. Um, and I think, and then I started putting down a bunch of like to do's and random thoughts. It's, it's still very, um, this is how I work. It's just kind of, I just put stuff down on paper so I don't forget. Um, these are all just more, uh, uh, to do items based on those things I was thinking about. Um, a lot of them are like kind of either visual or mathematical things. Uh, the ones I've bolded are a couple more things that I want to do data wise to make it easier when I start visually exploring. So, you know, that means we are going to do another pivot back to doing a little more, uh, data processing. Um, before I continue doing more visualization. Um, and I think maybe two things I want to try to do in this stream, we'll see. Um, processing always takes longer than I expect. Um, definitely do a couple of these um, scripty stuff. And then I might go to pencil and paper because I have a bunch of different things that have been percolating in my head um, about visual approaches to take. So I just kind of wrote down a bunch of these notes. Um, and maybe start sketching stuff out. So at least you guys can maybe try to see what's going on in my head. Um, yeah, that's the plan for today. We'll see what happens. Um, all right, let's get to it, I guess. So, oh, I lied. There was one other thing. Caitlin, um, because of the categorization, um, Caitlin went ahead and actually um, tried to synthesize uh, what people did into these buckets. Um, and Caitlin, I just consolidated it this morning. So um, it all looked great though. Uh, so there's kind of what, like five, I think, topics or, or industries that people worked in. So right, film, TV, it was a large one. Business was a very small one. Uh, sports was moderately sized. Politics was pretty small actually. Music was really big. Oops, and I forgot to change a couple of these. Um, uh, Avalos actually got turned into other because there's only like two. And that's also TV, film TV. Um, so really, uh, it doesn't, it's not too surprising. Uh, music and film TV are kind of the two big ones. Um, that seems to align with 
how celebrities are treated in media. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Oh, science, we got we got a science. We have a couple science in there. I'm not sure there's enough to for it to be a category, but um, same with comedy. There, there's a lot of stand-up comedians. I didn't know if I should put them as film TV because technically, you know, especially the older ones, they might not have just done like that TV specials might not have been as much of a thing. So it seems a little strange to, to broaden that, but um, yeah, that's the other thing we did. Cool. And so eventually I'll merge that back in with our, with our data. Um, all right, let's get to it. So one of our text editor. And let me try to stay focused. I'm going to try to stay focused. I know I keep going on, on tangents all the time, but uh, I'll do my best. Uh, so let's see. I know this is a very discrete task um, and something I want to do because um, not everybody not everybody has data for all the date ranges we're looking at. So I kind of wanted a normalized scale. Um, so there's the first thing I want to do is add this index, um, like you know, July first, two thousand fifteen, zero. July second is one, so on and so forth. Um, plus, I'll help um, eliminate gaps in the data as well. So, yeah, that's the first thing I want to do. Um, I thought I oh, where did that go? All right, well, let's figure out where I want to do that first. So let's go to our giant readme with all the instructions of what happens where. Um, get people page views. So it's clearly after that. Um, I think join people makes the most sense. This one is like all the requests, so I don't want to mess with that because that one just takes a while to run. That's the only one that takes a while to run. Uh, so I think join people maybe makes the most sense. It's probably not the best descriptor anymore, but that's where it kind of, and actually I remember join people was highly unnecessary because I ended up not even using that join thing. So I wonder if I even need this anymore. Oh, I do because it calculates the traffic. Um, hmm. Wait, where am I even writing this? Write file sync. Okay, I am writing one for each person. Okay, so let's see. Well, first of all, I need to create these indices. So um, I actually Googled this earlier. I don't see it. Let's close that. I got rid of. I think I searched for generate, yeah, all days. I found uh, basically just doing a quick script to generate uh, indices between two dates. Um, I found this gist that had just a little function to do this. And so instead of trying to figure out, I knew someone had already figured this out. Um, and this was a couple of years ago. So I was seeing if there's any updates and actually someone, yeah, I like this one. This one looks nice. Um, so let's grab that and let's just save that as, I should probably start having some helper scripts in case we don't wanna reuse them. So I'm gonna make uh, a nice script folder. Um, they're called helpers. And a touch helpers, uh, it's generate dates, right? date range. All right, so let's go to generate date range. And let's save this just so we can give it a reference just in case we wonder where the hell it's coming from. Um, returns dates between the two dates. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Um, so const get dates between. I'm just going to change this to actually and uh, actually, we can just say uh, export. Are we dealing with import export? No, we're not. 
So modules dot export module dot exports equals function uh, uh, generate. I don't need to have a name function, but it's good to, to name it. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, so let's see. It does const dates, strips, hours, minutes, and seconds. Um, oh, we don't need to worry about that because we're now going to pass that in. Um, and it just goes through and... Yeah, that looks good, I suppose. Yep. Um, so this is the usage, so we'll get rid of that. All right. Um, so now where would we want to use this? We wanted to use this in join people. So let's uh, require that function generate eight range equals require generate array dot slash it's relative. Um, maybe let's put it in the root. Actually, I'm going to move that folder because scripts are just the scripts that are run. So I think it doesn't make sense to have it inside. So let's see. Uh, move helpers to um, so this is helpers generate uh -huh. and let's just start by um, calling it and running anything else. So let's see, it generates states between two dates. So we'll say start date. And we want to do 2015, uh, six for July and sorry. Yeah, six for July one for the day. And it uh, we should just do today and say we're we're adding that. Um, we did dynamically before, so I'm just gonna grab that. That's not where I did it. Oh man, this should really be re this should be a helper function three times now. Um, that uh, at uh, a It's a module dot exports. And I'm actually going to export an object because we want it one time. Sometimes we want it in timestamp format. Sometimes we want it in um, actual date object format. So let's say we'll call this one timestamp. And then we'll create another one, which is um, date. And that's, uh, and actually I realized that's so unnecessary now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, so let me use this one. So let's just, we'll call it rather than today, we'll call this get today timestamp.
And let's see, where was that used? I was using here. Do we use get end? So now we can reuse this function in get wiki pages. The only difference is actually this one has the two zeros, so we need to pass that as a as a thing. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so maybe it will just pass in suffix or something. That's what we'll call it. So time sample expect. That's not how you do a function. Uh, is that even technically a suffix? I don't know. All right. Cool. Um, that was so unnecessary, but it makes me feel better. Uh, so <laughs> end date, I don't know why. Uh, did I do that for a reason? I, oh, no, right, because you can just do new date. I'm an idiot. But I totally overthought this. Um, end it. All right. Um, so this should actually spit out a shit ton of dates um, on that. What is this? Join people. And yeah, er, 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 generate date range. Can't find it. Oh, do I have to do dot dot slash helpers? There we go. So now we have a bunch of date objects. Let's say this should be perfect. That looks right to me. Let's actually, um, maybe I got the end ones to see how it, if it's inclusive on the ending. Slice. Um, actually, we don't want it to be. So okay, let's just do dates that pop. Let's look at the last one. Uh, that's today. So it's actually not include that one. Uh, and they actually changed. Maybe we'll change the function. Let's see how it works. And they. Um, because that's not technically between, right? That's including. So I actually you know, change this. Um, well, what we could actually let's do the simple way is to return. Um, is to actually we can just do dates that pop. It'll pop out that last one and return everything else basically. That's a cheap way of doing it. There we go. So now the last one is yesterday. So that's cool. Um, so now we've got our dates. Um, and actually, so we don't, I don't think we care about the real dates. Let me, let me, I, I think we only care about matching them to timestamps. So. Because everything, right, because everything here, or where am I looking at here? Everything in people page views, it doesn't have data objects or anything. It just has timestamps, if I remember correctly. So let's just double check. Yeah, so we just want to basically say, OK, find that timestamp. And we want to actually add uh, like a it index sort of thing. So this one. First one, right, would be zero. So that's what we want to do first. So let's do that. Um, so 
So it's actually. So, okay, we got our dates. I'm going to turn this into a function because it's getting a little bit long. Um, so this will be, so before we do any of this stuff, we'll actually call this function. Um, create date index. Function create date index. And this will just be like a, a global thing. So we don't have to create it every single time. So let's say let um, will be null to start. So now we have dates. Now we need to convert them to timestamps. So we can use that function, I think. Am I right? Am I right? Let's see. No, I'm not. Oh, we could. We can override this. So it can use new date. Or it could actually, uh, we could pass it in a date, which we currently have in an array. So that makes it a little more of a reusable function. Uh, so let's turn this into a, expecting an object. Um, actually, no. It'll be the first option will be um, the date, which by default, we can say equals to date. And suffix by default, well, it'll just be null. Um, so this is a new ESX JavaScript thing. You can uh, set default parameters. So and actually, we don't even have to do D. We can now just change all these D dots to date. So it'll be a new date. Or if there is something that is passed in, it'll be that. that. Um, so now we've got this. Oh, wait. I can't use date. I use date. Shoot. Uh, we'll change this one. OK. So now it expects two, two uh, parameters, a date and a suffix. Um, and I changed my mind again. Let's turn this to objects. So um, I don't like order passing stuff when there's more than a single thing, because then you have to remember the order. This is passing it as an object. Um, control. So let's see. First, let's make sure, let's fix the places it was used before. So here, we can just pass it suffix. And in the other one, uh, pages, I yeah, some people. Let's just pass it an empty object. Uh, and that means we need to set a default um, suffix to be an empty string. Okay, cool. Um, cool. And so here, we'll say const timestamps equals dates dot map uh, generate not generate daily range uh, what's it called today timestamp I changed the name of this <laughs> because it's not getting today anymore it's just getting a it's getting a timestamp um, where's helpers Head over here to and timestamp. Get timestamp. And here we're going to pass it eight. It's D. And we'll leave suffix to fall. Now, and actually, we don't need to call it timestamp, so let's call it. Uh, 
auto.log. Let's, let's see if that worked. What do you think, Dylan? Yeah, no. I say yes. So optimistic. I'm always optimistic. Oh. Did it work? No. I appreciate the optimism, though. <laughs> You're welcome. That's why I'm here. Uh, oh, what? Get timestamp. It's not. Right. It's not actual quiz. That means it's not updated somewhere. I copy and pasted it. D3 data format is not defined because this uses D3 and I didn't include it. Hey, check it out. We made a reusable function. That's great. Um, awesome. So we're so close. So now we have an array of every single day that's possible to be in our data set. Um, in this array. So um, now we can go and find the index and match that to the thing. Um, so let's get to the good stuff. So for each, um, let's see. Person page view data. So this is looping over each item in page view, which is what we want to do. Um, I wonder if we need person anymore. I feel like we don't. I'm so hesitant to, well, let's find out. Sleep person, project, article, granularity, access, agent. I think those were all things in the page view data. Let me just make sure. Um, people pages. Project article granularity as agent. Project article granularity access agent. It actually seems more work to do that than just uh, getting timestamp and views, which is all we want. So I'm going to change this. Uh, Timestamp. Views. Cool. Um, and then the last thing we want to add is, I guess we'll call it timestamp index. That's probably a good enough name. Stamp index. which will be um, timestamp index dot find index. So uh, we've been using the dot find feature, which will usually return the item in the array that matches what we're passing as the parameter. Um, if you add find index, it'll actually just return the index value of that. So the position in the array, which is what exactly what we're looking for here. So we can do find index, um, B, which in this case is, again, just going to be that. Um, B is equal to um, ppd.timestamp. Feeling pretty good about this. Everything back in. I just realized there's one more thing I'm going to want to do, but we'll do this first, baby steps. Um, and actually, first, let me delete all the join people. So remove output slash uh, people joined. We'll remove everything in that folder. Now let's run that script again and see what happens. 
content find index of null. Huh. Ah, because I didn't make this global. Okay, let's try it again. Hey, Caitlin, will you remind me that I have to uh, go at 11.30 in case I forget? Yes, I will remind you. <laughs> Thanks. You have 40 minutes. Actually, uh -oh. 39. That's plenty of, well, I guess that's plenty of time. I don't know. <laughs> uh, data processing and stuff always ends up taking me longer than I expect. Yeah, I feel like that's the story of everyone's lives. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did a project last semester with my friend, and we tried to use the Netflix prize data set. We were mm -hmm. like, oh, this will be really quick and easy. The worst idea ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I really do like this part, though. It's very meditative. <laughs> uh, cool. I think this is what it's bad at, or is it? Is, nope. Let's see. Cross your fingers. Oh, <laughs> uh, so close, but so far. Um, why did these have the double zero on it? So negative one is what's returned when it doesn't find a match on the index. So everything was negative one because I swore those didn't have. Did I spit that out for consistency sake? I don't even remember anymore. Let's look at the get pages function, get people pages. See, I, I swear, like maybe, oh, you know what? Maybe that was just the query parameter, but it actually must have still returned that extra double zero. Um, uh, yeah, I got bamboozled, okay. That's fine. Um, we just need to tell it because uh, our function is nice and extensible. Um, we actually do want that double zero suffix. And we shall get it. Um, I'm going to be dumb again and just run it blindly. Um, other than doing a single one, I think it's going to work. I appreciate your optimism. <laughs> You're in good spirits. I am. Despite being bogged down in data processing. processing. Well, yesterday was like a thousand degrees, and today it's a little more mild. Too um, hot to stream. Too hot to stream. I didn't stream <laughs> yesterday because it was so hot. I could barely, could barely focus. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, it's. It was like 95 on Sunday, and I think it was 95 yesterday here too. Oof. See, everyone's like, oh, you're from Florida. You should, like, be fine. And I'm like, summer in the city is a different story. Totally different. A hundred percent. There's air conditioning everywhere in Florida. It's rare here. <laughs> uh-huh. And, I mean, like, I'm assuming you were near a beach, right? So you could mm -hmm. go, which is always a lot breezier, too. Yep, 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 yep. I've never lived on a beach, I'm just guessing. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, this ran again. Let's check again. Um, oh, look at that. Timestamp index. Much better. Um, and this might look uh, unnecessary, but um, because like this person has all the data, but if we look at someone like... Um, I only know this because I remember looking at his chart. XXX. Um, I'm not going to try to say the name. You know what I'm talking about? The rapper. Yeah, XXX Tentacion, I think. I might be uh, totally off. Tenta uh, Tentacion. Tentacion, there we go. So perfect. Look at this one. 
his first timestamp index is 384. So if we tried to just like use this and like assume that there like there's a huge dates missing this whole time. And also it's interesting that there's this huge gap, right? This was clearly like the day it was probably created. Um, and then maybe like one edit <laughs> and then um, it didn't get looked at again almost a year. Um, so that brings me to my next point. Um, what's my next point? <laughs> oh, uh, I want to actually fill this in. It's like, I mean, this one's probably, this one, like, clearly he's not going to have any missing days after this because uh, they're all, you know, relatively high. Um, but if there is someone that, you know, was uh, getting only a couple page views a day, there could definitely be gaps in it. And I want to just fill in those gaps with either null or well, probably null here and then figure out what to do with it on the front end. Um, but that'll also be helpful when like calculating um, the weak binning, right? Because I'm going to have to account for like these two should not be in the same week. So it'll be helpful just having everything already indexed. Um, cause then I can just do it based on these numbers. So my whole point is, um, next thing I want to do is fill in those blanks, which we can just do right here again. Um, so instead of just spitting out merged, I would actually want to go through and fill in those blanks. So, um, I want to say, so we want to create an output that is actually timestamp, one for each timestamp. Um, I'll call it T here. And it will, if there is a value in merge, it'll use that. Otherwise, it'll create a filler object. Um, so let's see. Uh, A function con a function create filler and that will just return a new object and let's look what we're expecting in the output to look like this right um so we'll want a timestamp a timestamp index um views which will be null and percent traffic which should be also a null could set them at zero. I guess that's also valid too. I'm trying to wonder if what makes more sense. Um, I think I'm going to go with null for now. That's true. Oh, I guess view zero is also equally true. That means there is nobody looking at the page. Mm, any thoughts? Actually, we can get rid of those because I can just overwrite them. Okay. So it's going to go through and let's see. Um, on match equals uh, urged dot find. Uh, Um, uh, timestamp T. It's just that array of timestamps. So if it finds a match, I say return. So let's say uh, if match, match. If you do anything otherwise, return the filler data. So we we'll say return create filler. Um, Oh, let's just pass T because uh, so the timestamp and the index. So I take it back. Let's actually put those in there. Timestamp T, timestamp index I. There we go. Let's run this whole thing again. And hopefully, the next time we look at this, we should see a whole bunch of empty things. 
So it's like complete and every person we have will be consistent. BRB while this is running. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Oh, what? Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, I know what I did. Um, I still logged out, or I printed out merge rather than that new. Uh, man, I did a bunch of bad things here. Const merge with uh, filler. Oh, I'm just going to call it with filler. And I need to actually log that one up. And All right, so assuming that works, um, while we're doing indexes, actually, do I don't have that yet, so this one has to come at a later point. Um, same with the week, because actually, um, I might go to the drawing board for this one. Um, let's just wait for this to finish. I'll show you how I'm thinking about the week, and I think it actually makes sense to, to draw it out. Um, so both of these are going to have to happen once we've consolidated the data with um, with the uh, the date of death, and I think I'll do that where we did like the all those median calculations. So like I called it the explore file. Um, I think that's where I'm going to add that stuff. So let's just be patient here. Okay. Um, let's first make sure that worked. Sick. So now you see we filled it in with all the null values. And then there's that blip of probably where it was created. And then the rest of the data. So I don't I'm sure there'll be a couple other people. It's probably not gonna be too common, but I just wanted to cover cover all my bases. Um, who's actually the one bent in I think his name was Denton Cooley, um, who had like really low pages. I'm curious if it ever actually hit zero, in which case it wouldn't show up. Uh, I thought it was Denton Cooley. Oh, it's right there. Oh, no, it was always a moderate amount. But I still stand by my thing. I'm pretty sure there's other people that will have a couple of gaps in there. So I'm happy I did that. Um, OK, let me actually switch over. Let me hold on. Let me set up my camera so it's facing my paper. Um, OK, hopefully this works. Can you see, can you see that? 
All right, hopefully this works. Um, Very nice. You may or may not be on this now. Me? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know because we haven't done one with it. It hasn't been a screen share. Who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens. It's so okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, <Not> good. <laughs> all right, so yeah, um, the bin by week. So the reason I want to do this by week, right, is because right now let's pretend this is what the data looks like. We're gonna let's pretend this is like super zoomed in. We got like one thing here, and then next thing here, and then here, and then here and then a bunch of small ones, right? So that could look like, which is useful, but also, I wish that was, is that kind of blurry? Oh, well. Um, it might be upside down. Oh, is it upside down? Oh, I, I didn't even think about down. that. You gotta, gotta stretch your drawing upside down skills. Now, there it's, go. now it's the right way. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I can draw upside down. Let's try this. <laughs> Come on, let's <laughs> <you got> this. <laughs> okay. So by bin, so the point is, is this one is let's pretend that's the day of death, um, and then this one, which probably or maybe even all of these, are really still encapsulating um, that initial reaction. So my theory is, if we bin it by week, um, we might see something like. something that's just like a little more smooth out to represent the actual like shift um, that maybe reduces that noise and still explains like the whole spike thing. Um, also, I was thinking that definitely would account for um, like, let's pretend this is just a regular month. Uh, a lot of the times those will kind of go like this um, and I think that would do the same thing, like smoothing out the weeks a little bit to, to see like a week by week thing. Anyways, because we have, if we do it by week, we still end up with like 150 weeks worth of data, which is a lot. Um, so anyways, I kind of want to run all the same calculations that I'm interested in um, by both day and by week to see which one, like what it looks like. Um, and then the way I'm going to calculate this, um, Hopefully it doesn't get too confusing, but let's, let's say, um, right, I could do actual weeks where, you know, we start with, we could even, if we, uh, we don't have, let me switch back to the data. Let's see how easy this is. Uh, screw two. Um, so if we look at this person's data, I, I could just say, right, just zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, boom, that's one week, seven, eight, and so on and so forth. Um, or I could do it by like, let's pretend this is actually um, Monday or Sunday, however we want to start it. Um, I could do it by every seven that way. But the problem with that is, let me go back to the, uh, okay. The problem with that is, let's say, um, here, let me just draw another chart. So it goes boop, 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 boop. All right. So let's say this is kind of, whoa, our line. Um, if this is the start of the week right here, It will right nicely include that spike, but we accounted for. Let's pretend. Remember, like let's pretend this happened at 10 p.m. Like it could have an almost equally big spike as the second one. Um, and let's pretend our week actually started right here. So this one would end up actually being really. Both of these weeks would actually end up being really high because they both have this inflated thing which I think doesn't really represent the binning that well. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is let's draw that same thing again. Uh, 
um, saying, okay, let's start with that highest point, which is here, and say that is the middle of our week, right? So there's seven days in a week. So that's index three, upside down three. Oh, is that backwards? That's so backwards. <laughs> Uh, so upside down three. So that is index three and saying, okay, um, let's include the week to be right three things before and three things after. So it would include this, this, and this, which would incorporate the spike in one, two, three, which would also incorporate that. And then the rest of the weeks, right, would just be everything on either side. Uh, and the reason I would do this is because if there is this like strange like two day hump, it would always include the big spike within that um, that same week. So this week is always going to have that spike rather than it possibly like um, leaking to either side. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, Let's let's see how that actually translates to code. Okay, let me slide real quick. All right, so first, oops, don't want to save that. Um, let me check this in. Um, back add. Yeah, index. All right. So I mentioned that, well, first we need to know, oh, you can't see my pencil and paper anymore. Um, I think for the next one, I actually, when I do this, I might add another camera or another person so I can have the camera and myself going at the same time. The screen, I mean. Uh, okay. So, uh, let me clean this up and close everything. So we need to know that death times temp index um, to actually do this calculation. So let's find out again where that was added. Um, I think it was added right in explore. Maybe that's not necessary. Maybe we can Add details, what was that? Add details. That's a scraper. Um, I feel like it would make sense to do it after we filtered. Because again, it's not necessary. It's only necessary on the final population. Let me see, let me explore. Explore just again added uh, all those things, but I don't think it messed with page views, did it? Oh no, we did load in the page views. Mm. Mm-hmm. Let's prepare web do. Maybe this is where I should do it. Um, Cause all I'm doing is adding, let's see. Oh, but if I want to add more calculations. Oh, brother. Um, you know what, maybe we do want to do it in, in that join, which is now no longer a join something else. Um, let's see. It's using all deaths, which we already have that all. Oops. We do already have that timestamp of death oh, right there. So heck, let's do it. Let's do it where we just were. 
Uh, cause we're already again, iterating through all the pages. So let's just do it all in one place. Um, okay. So we want to create a new file, which will basically be the same as this file. The only difference it'll be, um, weeks, uh, and not these date timestamps. And then we're going to kind of add up these values together. Um, nah, I'm going to make it a new script. I don't want to overload it. I'm being ridiculous. Okay. So it will happen though, after, um, join people. So let's go to the readme. We can hopefully get this done before I quit. Um, all right. So change my stupid numbers. NPM run by week. Um, I do below um, in each person's page views by week. Um, the percent calculate, ooh, the percent traffic calculation. I'm gonna have to remember that one as well. That's a little trickier. Um, all right, let's just change these numbers. All right, so let's create a new file. Let's copy join people. Call it by week. Um, you might need that stuff. I'll put it's going to be. Um, week. What page is, but a week. A week. Um, I'm definitely going to need that. Uh, don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore. Really traffic. Uh, will need that. It's going to change. Um, how's article? That was never used. There will I need a filler function. Delete. Uh, let's see. So we're going to make the output directory. Uh, in this data, that's correct. And I'm gonna go through each, and we're gonna say create <clears throat> weak data. And we're actually gonna load in. That was all that timestamp stuff we need. Um, and we're gonna. Definitely map over that. Um, that's already in there. Actually, we're not going to map over that. We're going to do a couple of things. All right. So hold on, quick email check. Such is life.
totally forgot where it was. Okay. Well, first, let me just again run this blog person page data to make sure this is looping and swooping and not write anything up. Package. Add it to our make file script. Um, very good. Um, All right, so first things first, um, we need to figure out the timestamp index of the death. So if we just log console dot let's say console dot log then dot timestamp of death. Fairly certain that was the variable name. So we've got that. So the next thing we're gonna do is match that to person page view data. So let's say const. Uh, death index equals person page view data. Uh, dot find index. B dot timestamp is equal to person dot timestamp of and let's see if that, I forget already if we had the uh, zeros. It does have the zeros. Um, doesn't have the zeros. <laughs> so let's add the zeros. And let's just go ahead and log out death index. We should see a whole bunch of random numbers popping out. See some negatives, which is not a good thing. So most of those, and they should be going up, which makes sense because um, all these are in order. So let's see the negatives, like that shouldn't happen. Um, if death index is less than zero, console.log person. Actually, let me not log this out, so. All right, so a lot of people actually still didn't find it. That's weird. Let's check it out. Uh, starting with Sergio Sublima. Next. Sergio. Um, let's also log out. Time stamp of death to make sure that was a thing. So according to this one, his was oh. Uh, uh, I think we've got a problem with the timestamp of death because that looks like I'm pr pretty sure. Um, well, the data started July 1st, so I'm thinking everything is actually off by a month. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Where did we actually calculate timestamp of death? Timestamp of death.
Where the heck did we get the month index from? Oh no, I did it up backwards. So that should actually, because all the timestamps in, uh, all the timestamps in, uh, in all the Wikipedia stuff doesn't do zero indexing on the month. It's the actual month. Month index next year needs to be plus one for timestamp of death. Month pad. Oof, okay. Where else are we using this month index? Let's make sure it's not being written out anywhere. Check. Valid start. I'm pretty sure that one was accounted for. Okay. Well, let's rerun this one. So you always discover, discover new things. Um, so it's actually it's one free run in parts of your pages. Be sure it spits out that file. Um, yeah, so I don't think it affects anything else. Um, so now let's rerun and see if that didn't work. Only a single problem. That's great. And NAN is definitely not what we're looking for here. Um, so <laughs> let's see why that is NAN. Uh, what was his name? It's so interesting. Is that impossible? Oh, it was just a straight up parsing error. How about that? Huh, let's. Let's, do this. Let's get back in here. Um, I haven't looked at this in a while. Um, so let's just run. Let's see. When was he? 2016. Uh, November or December. All right. Okay, sorry. Um, oh, snap. <laughs> Did not expect to see a date unknown. Okay, so I think that just means we gotta drop that from the data set. Um, uh, oof, uh, parts of your pages, parts li. So where would he, let's see even, the first A I think is, first A is date. Um, 
first aid, first aid at title. It probably doesn't even have a title. Oh, shoot. Um, okay, well, I think what I'm actually going to do here is, let's see. So, right, this is an LI. So I'm not going to do actually like a hard if cell dot text dot starts with um, fate unknown return null. I should filter out. Anyone else that starts to pay on that? Oof. All right, let's see if he shows up in here now. Res. Okay. Um, I think that means we're good. Oh, shit. Um, okay. I'm not doing this thing again. Hopefully we don't see any errors. That means everyone found a match. So let's go back here. And I'm seeing it's 1123. I'm not going to be able to get through this. Uh, but we'll get as close as we can. All right, so we've got the death index now. So let me think about this. We want to use that um, as the middle of the week. Yep. Okay. So let's see. Um, okay. I think I got this. Um, Which first, let me look at, let's say console.log, death index, uh, and death index divided by seven. Math up four, so this is gonna be right the remainder. I think the remainder is gonna end up being the offset. That's not the remainder. That's the remainder. Oop. Okay. So people that died on the first day, it makes sense that the remainder is zero. Um, four totally doesn't make sense. Oh, right. Oops, one sec.
Um, so where are we? Commander, right. So that doesn't make any sense to me, right? Because for like four mod seven, or so wait, why was four mod seven zero? Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was, that was still the division. Okay, that's looking better. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going crazy. Um, Okay, so I think what this means is for like this one, the week should should really not start it. So this one, it makes sense to start the week. Oh no, we actually want to start it at the middle. So, um, so if it's zero, it's the first day we have. The middle in this case, actually, that's the, well, it's actually negative three. So we probably should also not even include anything that's, well, I might actually get rid of everybody that's in the first month at some point because we want to do a before and after and none of these people are gonna satisfy the four criteria. There just won't be enough data possibly. Um, but anyways, okay, let's not, ex let's exclude those ones. Um, Let's like look at 10, right? Um, well, 10 is already kind of the middle of the week. Let's look at nine. So nine, uh, let me go back to my pencil and paper because this is kind of how I take things out, right? Uh, so if we were to say like, Zero. Oh, I'm just going to do this upside down and then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Right. So normally the week would be zero through six. Uh, we want to shift it over. And so actually nine in this case almost falls directly in the middle, but the middle would actually be 10. So we wanna shift it so that nine is the middle. Um, so in this case, we just have to shift it to the right. Let's see. Yeah, we just have to shift it to the right one. And our remainder was two. So I think we can just use the remainder. It'll just be remainder minus one. So let's look at another example, actually. So if we have, um, let's look at 13. Zero, one, two, three. All right, so again, um, the start of the week, the weeks would actually be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in this case, this is a perfect example. Like we probably want 13 and 14 um, to be together. So to get 13 to be the middle of the week, right? We actually want to shift it over. Well, if we're sticking with the whole move it to the right thing, it would actually move into that next week. Let's see if I'm right. So our remainder here is six. Six minus one is five. So if we moved it over five, it would actually be one, one, two, three, four, five, 
Let's see what that would do. That would put this at zero, one, two, three. I'm off by one. Maybe it's the other direction. Let's let's go back to our nine. <laughs> um, all right. So in this case, what we said right now, zero. Uh, this is the We want it to be the three spot. So in this case, this was the zero, one, two spot. So if we shifted it one to the left, it works. Um, how many to the right would that be? If we wanted to go the other way, it would be, it would be a lot. That's making any sense. Oh shit, I gotta go. All right, we'll pick this up when I get back for bearing with my nonsense. See you guys.